Sigwili. Hi, um, my name is Dakota. Um, my spirit name is Galolux. It means she gathers. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Haudenosaunee creation story. It complements the exhibit you are about to see. So it starts in a place that we call Sky World. Earth does not exist at this point yet. Um, so in Sky World, um, the people didn't know greed or hatred or jealousy or any of those types of negative traits. Um, all they did was work for the highest good of their people and their community. They all had special gifts or talents. and. Um, so anyway, it's mid, we call it midwinter, it's midwinter um, ceremony going on in the sky world and there is this elderly chief, he's never had a partner, never had children ever, um, so they decide to add three days to the midwinter ceremony and it's a dream guessing contest and whoever guessed the dream would be the chief's wife. So all the unattached women would take part and this ceremony went on for many years, um, no such luck and until this one, one time, this woman, um, she decided to participate in the dream guessing contest and she happened to guess the right dream and all the villagers were so excited because they didn't think anyone was going to win and right away she became the wife of the chief like right away they planned a wedding and they didn't they didn't stop to ask this woman if she really wanted to um, marry this chief she was just kind of excited with the people just went with it but after a while after being married she realized that she didn't want to be with this chief, she didn't love him. She actually fell in love with another man that in the village, a young man. And um, she became pregnant by this young man. And the chief already knew all this. Uh, that was his gift. He, he knew everything in the village. So he, all, he, all he wanted was her to come forward and tell him herself what happened. So she did, and um, the chief and the wife agreed to let the other villagers know what happened. So they, they told the people, and they're very sad. But even at this time, there was sort of an, a law that was in place back in, back in these days. And it, their punishment or, um, was they were banned. They were banned from that world. So, before she leaves, um, they, she goes for a walk, she goes for a walk through the woods and um, she's just walking around and um, all the seeds from the, the plants are getting caught on her dress and um, she's, she comes across these berries. And it's the berries that are ripe during the late spring, early summer, which is the strawberry. So she's eating these berries before she leaves. And um, they also made her new clothes, new pouches. They gave her seeds, musical instruments, and um, they gave her a big feast as well. So she goes. They, um, she goes to this tree and that's where they dug the hole. They dug a hole through the ground until it broke through and all you could see down there was just water and air, like rough seas kind of. And um, So they begin to lower her down there and her partner the one who impregnated her. Um, he was sent down there as well, but he was made into a spirit being. And his gift was he could fly and he could throw fire sticks. 
so his job was to kind of patrol the earth, I guess, the, well not the, the water. Um, so he goes down to these birds, these large birds, it's what we know today as geese. And um, so he asked these geese, um, can you help my, my lady, she's falling from the sky world. So they agree, they, they fly up and they form a V. And that was so that they could catch her on their backs. And that's why they still fly that way today. So they fly up under her, they catch her, and they bring her down to the water. And they're, they're, there's already animals in the water, and they're trying to figure out, like, well, where can we put this woman? There's really nowhere to put her. So they gather in a council, and they see a turtle coming, and they thought, we should ask him. So they ask this turtle, can we put this woman on your back? And she, she's, she's fine with that. And then he says, yeah, I would like to do that job. I would be honored to do that. So they put her on the turtle's back. And so everyone goes back to what they're doing, you know, and um, then, then they check up on the woman and they notice she's uncomfortable. Like the the shell's really hard and cold and plus she's pregnant so she's quite uncomfortable. And um so they gather in council again and um they remembered this teaching that they got from their ancestors about this brown stuff that's far down deep into the water. And so they decide that someone's gonna make this dive and go get it. And the first volunteer is the beaver. The beaver is, uh, he believes he's the best for the job. He's very strong, he has a strong tail. So he dives in and he's gone a really long time. And then they notice him coming back up and he doesn't have any of the brown stuff. And then they ask, well, what happened? And he says, it was dark, I couldn't see the sun anymore, and I was scared of the serpents, so I found my way back up to the surface. So they gather in council again, and this time the otter volunteers. And the otter, he would be a better choice only because he's smaller than the beaver and he swims really fast, almost as fast as a fish. So he takes right off right away, he pierces down into the water and off he goes and he's gone really long. He's gone twice the amount of time as the beaver was gone. So and then the animals are waiting around and they didn't see any sign of him for a long time. And then they see something coming back up and they get excited. So he resurfaces and they swim over to him, the animals, and they realize that he drowned. He lost his life and he didn't have any of the brown stuff. So they put him on the turtle's back. And um, they, they thought, the animals, they thought it'd be too dangerous to keep doing this dive because he just lost his life. So, so the animals, um, they decide to not do this dive anymore because it's too dangerous. And then a voice, a voice at the back of the group, he says, I want to make this dive. And the other, the leader of the council, he says, are you sure you want to make this dive? Did you see what happened to the beaver and the otter? One." Um, couldn't make it and the other lost his life and the little voice says yes I still want to make this dive and he says the leader says okay well who we want to know who this brave creature is so he starts coming to the front of the crowd and once they realize who it is they begin to laugh because 
Um, the animal is a muskrat. <laughs> he has crooked whiskers and um, he has a really thin tail like a pencil. So there's, there's nothing these animals can do to convince the muskrat not to go. So all they do is just send him their best wishes and yeah. And so he goes, he goes into the water and he, um, he dives down and he's gone really long. Um, he's gone about twice as long as the otter was gone. And a lot of the animals actually gave up hope, but some of them did stick around and, you know, they kept checking. And then finally they did see something coming to the surface. And he resurfaced, but they realized he lost his life as well. So as they were carrying him to put him on the turtle's back where the otter is, they noticed he had stuff in his hands, they were clenched really tight. So they pried open his hands and there was the brown stuff. And they were really excited and there was some in his mouth as well. So they grabbed the brown stuff from him and they give it to the sky woman. <clears throat> and she takes this brown stuff and she puts it on the back of the turtle and she forms like a circle and she takes out her instrument from Sky World that the people gave her and it's called the water drum and she starts uh, playing the drum and she starts singing and dancing she's dancing in like a counterclockwise direction and she's doing a heel toe type of dance. Uh, the seeds that got caught on her dress they begin to fall off and they're growing with the um, they're growing with the brown stuff and growing with the turtle because the turtle's growing as well. And um, these these plants that fell, or the, the plants that grew from the seeds, um, they didn't grow as tall or as um, large as plants nowadays do. They're really um, small, and so that's, that's why they're wild plants. <laughs> so she just keeps doing this and doing this dance. Um, they say she's done it until. Um, the land that we know today is is here, um, and that's why we call it Turtle Island because the land's on the back of a turtle. So, not long after that, she's yeah she's still carrying and um, she's about to give birth, and she gave birth naturally just fine and. She had a daughter, but this daughter, she grew really fast compared to how we grow today. Um, she grew into a young girl really fast and all of a sudden she's a young woman. And um, this young woman, the one night she was sleeping and this man came to visit her in her dream and his name was Westwind. And, uh, he was telling, he was telling um, Sky Woman's daughter about how he found out about her, and because he traveled, um, he traveled the earth with her father, which is um, the spirit being who could fly, and he throws fire sticks, um, and he would brag about his daughter, and so the bringer of water, West Wind. Um, he wanted to see for himself. So when he did see her, he fell in love with her right away. And that's when he introduced himself to her in her dream. And they both agreed to be partners for all time and that they would have children. So 
another one morning when she wakes up, she notices that she has two arrows on her stomach. One is really, one is really sharp, and the other is dull and not so good. <laughs> and the two arrows represent <clears throat> the twin she's going to have. And so, and the, the arrows also indicate the personalities of these twins. So one will be good and the other will be not so good. Um, even like while she was pregnant with these twins, they gave her a hard time. Like she had a rough pregnancy. They developed a, they say that uh, they developed a jealousy of each other even then. Because when they were going to be born, um, the good twin, we're going to call him the holder of the skies. He was being born naturally and the mischievous one, he got jealous that he was going to be born first. So as he's being born, the mischievous one ripped through the mother's side and the wounds killed her. So um, the grandmother, Sky Woman, she hasn't seen human death before, so she's not sure what to do with her daughter. But she remembered back to the otter and the muskrat who lost their lives trying to get the brown stuff for her. And what she did for them was she covered them up with the brown stuff. So that's what she decided to do with her daughter. She covered her up with the soil. And um, because the mother has such a life-giving force with um, within her right now um, from having given birth to her twins it's emitting in the soil so um, the grandmother Sky Woman she decides to honor her daughter by giving her something from Sky World and she uh, uses the seeds that she got from the Sky People and she puts them over her grave and the father of the twins, West Wind, <clears throat> he brings water and he puts them over her grave. And her father, the spirit being, he is purifying the air and the sun is brings warmth. So all of that stuff combined, it, this new life begins to sprout from her body. And it turns out to be corn beads and squash that grew over her grave. And just like the twins, the corn beads and squash came from her body. So the grandmother told her grandsons, the twins, that they are to refer to those plants as the three sisters and their three sisters. And the reason those plants are female is because if you replant the seeds it will grow just um, just life-giving like a woman does and <clears throat> so not long after that the, the boys begin to grow up and they find their gift and their gift is to create and because they're twins they share it equally so the holder of the skies, he is um, creating all the good things like um, plants. He would create, for example, a rose and the mischievous one would come along and put a thorn on it. So that's the balance of life. And um, so the holder of the skies, he is making all of these plants they're really good for you, no side effects, just pure good plants. And the mischievous one, he wants to do the same thing. So he makes plants that are almost identical to his brother's plants. But the only difference is, is his are poisonous. And if you don't know how to use them properly, it wouldn't be very good for you. So 
that's what we are supposed to remember when picking plants is to know which is which it's very important to know that so because those um, the twins created both good and bad medicines, so you have to know what you're picking. Um, they also created animals, and there was a time when the animals, um, they would respond to you. And what I mean by that is, if you call them, they would come over, there was no fear. So, um, the twins, they took turns hunting every winter. So um, this year it was the mischievous one's turn and he got lazy and um, he found this cave and he called all of the animals to him and like I said they weren't scared so they came over and he told them all to go in this cave. So they did, they listened to him and he grabbed this huge rock and he put it over the cave so he locked them in. and. Um, he would go back home and each time he went out, he would come back with whatever animal they needed when he went hunting. And they, the grandmother and his brother kind of thought it was weird, but at least they had something to eat. So one day, the holder of the skies, he is walking through the forest and he comes across that cave. And he notices the rock that is covering covering it and he thought that looks intentional like if someone put that there so he moved it and he called three times into the cave and when the third call all the animals come rushing out and they all scattered and um, he was trying to call them to see if they would come and they wouldn't no more. That was the day when the animals became wild. They wouldn't come to the humans anymore. And this really upset the holder of the skies. So he went back home. He called out his brother and they began to fight. But this time it was really serious. They were throwing things at each other, they were using weapons, it was, it was bad. And um, the holder of the skies, he found this deer antler and he had his brother, the mischievous one, down on the ground. And he raised it up and he was going to kill his brother with it. And the grandmother, she caught up to them and she made them stop. And the holder of the skies, he believed that he won the fight. So in return, he became kind of like the ruler or the master. And he, he made the rules. So um, he put in place that the mischievous one would cause too much trouble if he were to stay on earth but also he'd be too much trouble if he went back to sky world so what they did was there's a sky road that goes from earth back up to sky world but he lives in between worlds he has his own cabin up there and um, they separated uh, biz business hours <laughs> Um, so the um, holder of the skies, he takes care of the day and uh, the mischievous one takes care of the night um, and he can't see very well so that's why he couldn't get into as much trouble that's why he takes care of the night and um, their intentions were to have humans walk the earth so, and the only way to go back to Sky World is when you become a spirit being. And um, the mischievous one, he could only entice those people to come in to his cabin and visit, but that's all he could do. Um, so, 
that's how that works. Um, not too long after that, the grandmother passed away. And to honor her, they um, put her up into the sky and they made her the moon. And they put her right across from the mischievous one's house, the cabin, so that she would provide some light for him so he could see what he was doing. But also so that when he did go to take care of the night, she would see him for who he really is. And that's why we um, term, we have that term, Grandmother Moon. So, um, the holder of the sky is, he's walking amongst the earth and, you know, he's looking at all of creation and making sure everything's good and making sure he's happy with everything before he makes humans. And he noticed as he was walking that there was some really, there was some life that was, that barely had any life in them and he was wondering well I I was wonder or he was wondering why that is. So he keeps walking west and he comes across this huge huge uh we'll call him fellow, this huge fellow and um we know him as Hadui and um he asked this Hadui, he said, where do you come from? I haven't seen you before. And he, Hadui says, oh, I live in the mountains and I made all of this. This Hadui, he's really scary and boastful and kind of aggressive. So the holder of the skies says, no, I, I created all of this. So they're both um, debating who made everything on earth, so um, Hadui challenged him to a mountain moving contest. And so the holder of the skies turns around and Hadui says, I will move that mountain and it will be behind you. So he shook his turtle rattle. He banged his elm stick and the earth shook a little as the mountain did move, but it didn't move very far. So, creating um, the holder of the sky is he realized that this, this Hadui is powerful, but it was his turn now. So the holder of the skies moved the mountain so fast, it was right behind Hadui and when he went to turn around he banged his face off of the cliff or the mountain and that's why his nose is crooked and his mouth is twisted and um, his face changed colors from the pain so the holder of the skies won the mountain moving contest and Hadui wanted to know what his fate was he didn't want to leave the earth, but the holder of the skies was saying, well, if people were to look at you, they wouldn't be the same because he intends to have human beings walk this earth. So he doesn't really think it's a good idea for him to stay. So Hadui, <clears throat> he offers his help for the human beings and the holder of the skies asks, well, how can you help them if they can't see you? And Hadui says, well, they will carve my face from a specific tree and they will, you will show them my mannerisms, how I walk and how I talk. And they will they will feed me tobacco and corn mush with maple syrup because that's what I crave and in return I will help them and I'll help them with their aches and pains whether it's in their mind or in their body or any great disease or um,
bad weather, like strong winds, I will help them with all that as long as they feed me. And they need to give me their name and have a fire going and that's where they burn their tobacco. And I will refer to them as my grandchildren and I will take care of them. I will be their great defender. So the holder of the skies, he agrees to this. He, he grants Hadoui stay. So that's why even today we still um, have the medicine society. And that's why they wear the masks. And as you can see from the exhibit, there is no actual masks, but there's carvings of the mask in a tree. <clears throat> so anyway, um, the holder of the skies, he decides to make the human beings. And so he, he uses the earth because his grandmother taught him that his mother is in the earth. She is the earth. So if he's ever missing her, she's right there. So he uses earth and he uses um, lake water to make to form these clay like dolls and they're they're the red dolls. And what he done was he made a male and a female and um, his brother, the mischievous one, he sees him making these dolls, so he comes down and he asks if he can help make some too. And his brother agrees, he says, yeah, sure, yeah, come, just find some natural resources, that's all I'm using to make these dolls. So the mischievous one builds this huge fire and lets it burn down, and he gathers all of the ashes. And as he's doing that, uh, the holder of the skies, he is making another set of dolls. He uses earth and seawater, and they are the yellow dolls. And so the mischievous one, he has all his supplies, and so the mischievous one and his brother, the holder of the skies, they're gonna make dolls together. And so the mischievous one is using ashes and earth for his dolls and the holder of the skies is using earth and air for his dolls. So the one that the holder of the skies is making are the black dolls and the mischievous one he's making the white dolls. And what um, the holder of the skies tells his brother to do is we need to breathe into them three times and that is how they will come to life. So, um, they both pick up their dolls, um, the holder of the skies picks up the red dolls first, his first pair of dolls he made, and the mischievous one has his dolls, and so he, they both breathe into them three times, and the, the red dolls, they start to wiggle and squirm around and blink, and, and um, they come to life and he puts them down and he lets them play and he does he, he does um, the next dolls the yellow dolls he picks them up and breathes into them three times and they go off and play and the mischievous one he's getting really frustrated because his dolls are coming to life he keeps trying but it's not working for him and so the holder of the skies he picks up the black dolls and he breathes into them three times and everything's fine he lets them go play as well and by this point the mischievous one is just really upset and he doesn't want to do it anymore and he said it's not working for him so he just left them there and then his brother asked well can I try and the mischievous one says yeah go ahead you can have them and he goes back up to his cabin in the sky. So the holder of the skies, he picks up the, the white dolls and he breathes into them three times and they come to life. So they're all playing together and 
Um, instead of the holder of the skies, this is when he becomes the creator. Because he created he, well, he's created everything he ever intended to have on this earth. So he teaches them, he teaches these dolls the ways, like their original ways. He teaches them how to live in this world and how to take care of it and what resources there are. And he told them to pay attention to these teachings because he was only going to share them once. And because he decided to go back to Sky World, and so it was their responsibility now to take care of the Earth and everything on the Earth. So he taught them all the ways, and um, obviously some of them uh, only heard what they wanted to hear or heard it differently, because once he was back in the sky. Um, they were, they were living in harmony at first, but some of them didn't agree on things, so they began, they began to fight, and they began to disagree, and Creator saw this, so he actually came back down, and what he done was he split them up. He put each colored doll in each four directions of, of the earth, because they weren't getting along. When he gave them those te those original teachings, he was standing on a stone. He, um, he was standing on the stone, and that's when he gave them their original instructions. And that's where the Oneida people get their name from, Onyotaga, people of the standing stone. So uh, that's where that comes from. And the teachings that he gave them was that each color was responsible for a certain element. And the red, uh, the red people were responsible for the earth and the land. And the yellow people were responsible for the waters. And <clears throat> the black people were responsible for the air. The white race was responsible for fire, taking care of the fire that all of the um, races would gather around to keep warm and for protection and cooking and all those things. He gave that gift to them it was the Thanksgiving ceremonies and they're still here today. So when he separated the four races the Creator did tell them that they would all reunite again one day back in the homeland, which is where the Red Race um, has stayed. And he, But he also warned that his brother, the mischievous one, would come and try to bring them together before they matured because that was the goal was that they were split up and that they had to um, mature on a mental and spiritual level before coming together again. The people begin to fight again um, even though they're split up. Um, they begin to fight and really odd occurrences are happening and so the creator formed a rainbow and what that rainbow represented was that he was still using his power for their benefit. But there was a, also a prophecy that came with that rainbow and it said that when that rainbow stretches from east to west and if the thunders were to come from the east that life would end and life didn't completely end but the creator did wash away some life and he began to renew the earth again and that was when he gave them some new ceremonies and it was the strawberry ceremony and the maple sap ceremony and it was to teach them 
to be thankful, to have peace and love in their hearts, and to honor the medicine plants and healing properties of those plants. So, <clears throat> the Creator's brother, the mischievous one, he had a really strong influence on the people at this point, and um, a lot of um, jealousy, greed, murders, those kind of things were happening among the people. And the Creator, um, he kept trying to help them, but there was just so much chaos and destruction within the um, plant and animal life as well. And the disease is one of the main things that roamed the earth at this time. So this is when Creator decided to give them herbal medicines. And he told them that there would only be a few people that would know how to pick them, where to go, and what they look like, and what they are used for. So it was really important to remember um, the teachings behind those plants. Also, around this time, uh, the foods were very scarce. So, <clears throat> the Creator sent a messenger to bring them domesticated food and seeds for them to plant. And because the foods were no longer wild or abundant, well, there, there were still wild foods but they were no longer abundant so that's why he gifted them domesticated seeds it was just that they had to work harder for their food now and <clears throat> this was also when the creator gave them um, the harvest and planting ceremonies um, and he gave them at many other ceremonies as well and unfortunately there is more to the story but that's all there is time for <laughs> so if you don't go for listening thank you